Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Jason Stanley. I will be uh, preaching for Pastor Witt over the next couple of weeks, and I invite you to now center ourselves in prayer as we begin our worship this morning. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. hear the call to worship. Come on you, let's worship the Lord. Come to Jesus, all of you who have suffered a beatdown this week. Come to Jesus, all of you who have experienced family turmoil this week. Come to Jesus, all of you who are tired of conflict all around, tired of high gas prices, tired of glass ceilings, quotas, minimum wage jobs, and limited family values. Come to Jesus, all of you who have a job that is getting on your last nerve. Jesus said, I'll give you rest. I'll bring you relief. I'll provide your deliverance. I'll make a way. And Jesus will give us wonderful rest. Come on, you. Let us worship the Lord. Now hear the invocation. In times of weakness and hours of need, yours is the strength by which we carry on the shoulder we rest our head upon. When our load is heavy and too much to bear, yours are the arms stretched out to help us with the grace that we depend on. In times of weakness and hours of need, your voice is heard, come, find rest. This is grace divine, the path we tread to wholeness of body and spirit, the path that leads to you and for which we offer our offering of praise. Amen.
Let us pray for illumination. Lord God, please open for us your written word. Holy Spirit, attach to these words and make them become living experiences for us so that we may hear a renewed word from you. Amen. This morning's scripture reading comes from the letter of James, the first chapter, verses 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave birth to us by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For human anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and right growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not haters who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The written word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Hi, friends. It's good to be with you again. I'm Reverend Jason Stanley, preaching for Pastor Witt. This fall, an American icon will turn 95. This is a public figure that's been entertaining children and adults since his first major big screen appearance in November of 1928. He has been resilient through the changes of culture in the world. In 1996, he was named one of the 100 greatest film stars of all time. And in 2002, TV Guy called him the ultimate pop culture icon. His fan base has included young children and presidents. Academics have pondered his contribution to pop culture and its meeting. Preachers have wondered what would be different if we all looked at the world through his eyes. Now, you may have already guessed that I'm talking about the American icon, Mickey Mouse. That's right. Mickey Mouse turns 95 this fall. His first film, Steamboat Willie, was the first cartoon that matched the sound and music with the actions of the, on the screen perfectly. It made its appearance November 18th, 1928. And ever since, the world has known who Mickey Mouse is. In 1935, the Washington Post stated overnight, Mickey became an authorized representative of the American people. So as I've been pondering this, I see something else. I look at Mickey's innocence, his optimism, his determination, his compassion, and his courage, and I see the characteristics of the Christian life. For example, in the short Mickey Mouse cartoon, a fairly new Mickey Mouse cartoon called Three-Legged Race, Mickey is faced with a dilemma. As the cartoon opens, Mickey declares his excitement as the whole town comes together in the spirit of fair play for the annual Three-Legged Race. Every year at the race, Mickey partners with Minnie Mouse. However, this year, Minnie decides to partner with Daisy Duck because every year she and Mickey lose the race. Mickey leans over and whispers to Minnie Mouse, but she's a cheater, talking about Daisy. Now, this doesn't seem to affect Minnie or her choice in race part. So that leaves Mickey needing to find a new partner in order to run the race. Peg Leg, Peg -leg Pete, the large dog, cat, what is Pete? What do we know? with the peg for his leg, also needs a partner. And so he willingly allows Mickey Mouse to run the race with him as he duct tapes Mickey to his peg leg. When the race begins, all the pairs use all kinds of tactics to get ahead of or to eliminate their competition. And the whole time, Mickey is lamenting the actions of his friends because they are not acting in the spirit of fair play. As the race continues, Mickey and Pete are about to win, but Mickey cannot bring himself to win by cheating. So he stretches out, grabs a tree trunk, and he and Pete are flung all the way back to the starting line. The mayor of the town holding the trophy asks, is there no one honorable enough to win this trophy fair and square? And Mickey dragging Peg Leg Pete through various seasons of the year, eventually makes it to the finish line, winning the trophy, fair and square. Mickey shows a lot of integrity in this cartoon. A quick Google search of the word integrity gives us this definition, the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. I've been thinking about integrity a lot lately, maybe because overall in our culture, there seems to be a lack of integrity, a lack of, of, of leaders with integrity, maybe because I've been reading the book of James, which we heard from this morning, where as many of, of Paul's, where, where many of Paul's letters were written to new Christian communities, James's letter is written to the established church. And these Christians that James is writing to, they've been in community for some time. And James is offering advice and counsel. It's the, it's the dear Abbey of the early church. James is providing instruction on how to live the Christian life. For James, a genuine faith has implications for how we live our lives. And this letter is a reminder that, it, that in the midst of everyday life, the struggle to maintain the Christian faith in the midst of suffering, in the midst of chaos and conformity, there are still opportunities for discipleship. This means, James would argue, we devote 
equal amount of time to hearing and studying faith and putting our faith into action. A central theme of this letter is that is made evident in every line is the integrity of the Christian life. The letter, Francis Taylor Ginch writes, challenges us to be persons of integrity, that is, people who are consistent in all we see, say, believe, and do. Writer So Young Kong, uh, like Taylor Ginch, does not overlook the requirement of consistency when considering integrity. She writes the following in the Huffington Post article. Consistency is about being the same regardless of the situation. For example, do you know of leaders whose mood changes by the day and make rash decisions for cert on certain days, yet calm and engaging on other days? This would be an example of inconsistency of actions and outcomes. It is a good reminder of lacking integrity. Integrity without consistency leaves us doing random acts that are sometimes good. And without consistency, we are unpredictable. In the Mickey Mouse cartoon that I described earlier, Mickey is the only character in the cartoon that consistently shows integrity. Many does not want to be his partner because every year they lose. Other characters do all kinds of things to win. But it's Mickey. But it's Mickey who shows the most integrity. It's not about winning or losing for Mickey. It's about playing fair and square. The integrity of faith is being consistent in what we say, see, believe, and do. And the verses that we've read this morning conclude with what we could call the three marks of genuine religion. One is our speech. How do we speak to others? What do we say? It is interesting that for James, the first mark of genuine religion concerns our speech. Later in James's letter, he will call Christians to tame the tongue. We're going to talk about that in a few weeks. James understood that words can hurt more than sticks and stones. The second is to care for orphans and widows in distress. And this is an ancient Christian mandate. Jesus, Jesus spoke of it. The early church anointed deacons to see that those who live on the margins or are oppressed are taken care of by the church. And James stresses that this care is the task of all Christians. And the third is to keep yourself unstained by the world. James in no way is suggesting that we live in a Christian bubble. Taylor Gitch writes, Christians are to be engaged in the world, but they are to hold a different understanding of reality and a different set of values informed by their experience of the grace of God in Jesus Christ. James calls the Christian community to have faith with integrity, because when we live by these marks, we become symbols of what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And this perhaps, is the greatest form of evangelism there is. There's an important uh, discourse between Jesus and some Pharisees in Mark chapter 7. In there, the disciples are being accused of eating with defiled hands. In other words, they haven't washed their hands before they eat. And the religious leaders at the time balk at this disrespect of tradition. And Jesus replies to the, to the Pharisees and religious leaders, you abandon the commandments of God and hold to human tradition. That's in Mark chapter 7, verse 8. He's calling the religious leaders out by saying, you are holding to these ancient traditions while not holding on to the commandments of God. Jesus will go on to say in Mark chapter 7 that the things that come out of you is what is defiled. It's what's in the heart that matters. In other words, if we invest fully into traditions, into practices, into things that we've always done a certain way, we will miss the opportunities for discipleship. Especially when we do not give attention to what is inside our hearts. And I imagine James may have had these 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 quotes from Jesus in mind when he wrote about the three marks of genuine religion. You, you see, oftentimes while caring for tradition or for practices or the way that we always do things, our speech is defiled. And while upholding these certain values and practices and things that we've always done a certain way, we ignore the orphaned and the widowed. 
or even while holding others accountable for the tradition like the Pharisees were doing to the disciples, we turn a blind eye to our own stains. In the three-legged race cartoon, Mickey Mouse was consistent in what he saw, said, believed, and did. He held to the value of playing fair and square, and he held to his integrity to do the right thing. He would not allow himself to win that race by cheating. This is what's important in the Christian life. For the Christian life, it is made complete in how we speak to one another, how we care for those who are oppressed, and how we live in this world. It is not enough to hear the word. We must become doers of the word, consistent in our integrity of faith. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all those who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you join me in praying silently for our sins? Hear the good news, the gospel. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen.
please join me in the prayer of dedication. Generous God, give thanks for all you have given us. We return from it in offering for the sake of spreading love as the body of Christ. Open us, Lord, to even better ways to steward your creation under our care. Help us to aid you and bring your kingdom to the world. In the name of Christ Jesus, we offer this prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. The night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he raised it, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup. He raised it, he gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, O oh Lord, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, O oh Lord, and on these gifts of bread and wine, Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirits, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. Would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, make this be a means of grace for us, a place where we find your holy presence. Make this be for us a sign and a symbol of your sacrifice and a call for ours. You may receive your elements.
thank you for worshiping with us today and as a blessing, benediction and blessing, I want to leave you again with these words from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. This is what it says, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.